Welcome to the Healers Cafe, conversations on health and healing with Mano Belize, a retired and deregistered naturopathic physician with 30 plus years of experience. Here you will discover engaging and informative conversations between experienced healers, covering all aspects of healing, the personal journey, the journey of the practitioner, and the amazing possibilities for our own body and spirit. So welcome to the Healers Cafe. And today I have with me Anthony and Stacy Lucasio. And um, we're going to have a very fun time because they're going to talk about how um, you can basically tap yourself back to health using foods. And um, they've they've done they're like world renowned professional entertainers, oh. so um, I'm already having fun. <laughs> they've been on Sesame Street Live, and um, oh, I saw all these other things that you guys were on. It's, tap it's dogs. Really- we've tap dogs. We've we've actually tap dogs. <laughs> I've done tap dogs in Canada quite a few times. Okay, yeah. So that's uh, that's quite something. So I, my first question to you is, what got you? interested in that health journey i mean i love the whole thing about the life journey (laughs) the lack of the lack of help from traditional resources okay traditional resources don't work or fail you you need to figure out something else so you start you know looking and really for me it was it was affecting my job it was affecting my career it was affecting my ability to dance on stage or on screen and Um, and my body was changing and I didn't feel right. And I was internally bleeding and there were no answers. So if the traditional methods don't get you answers, you wind up going on a a, a, a very interesting self health help journey. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so was that the the case for, for both of you or? Yeah, I, you know, I went for a long time in my life really believing and following doctor's advice like and so taking the medication and doing the things until I realized it was really actually harming me specifically for me, the things mm-hmm. that I had taken over the years, all the antibiotics, all of the, and it had really kind of Adverse effects. come to a head kind of thing and Hashimoto's presented itself to me. Yep. And so it, it was a choice of, I mean, I had I had a, a rheumatologist who is not from America and I believe that that definitely helped push me into, you know, towards the alternative medicine side. She was also very into, okay, well, here's the prescription that I'm gonna give you, but <laughs> you should also do this. And she introduced me to the blood type diet. And so that's kind of where I started um, all of this. And, and then it just kind of went from there. Mm. And so how, I mean, what I find just, you know, wonderful is that when people make a shift, then it's usually kept somewhat secret. You know, they do their thing, <laughs> they they get better, they their doctor usually doesn't ask why they got better. Mm. Um, you know, because I've sent a lot of people, hey, maybe you want to educate or something like this. <laughs> and that doesn't like not really an interest, you know. Um, but you've you've made it a public thing and you're having fun. <laughs> doing it <laughs> at least it looks that way to me from yeah. what i what i looked in a little bit part of our job uh, is to have fun and yeah. to bring fun into other people's lives through teaching. our own experiences and through our teaching uh teaching of dance teaching of entertainment and life and life itself <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and so now that you know what you know i mean you know this this part that i'm sure you were people wanting philosophically to have fun but if you're in agony pain bleeding and (laughs) dealing with all of this stuff you know it's limited right (laughs) so so how much 
you know, because people say the attitude and mentality, your belief systems, all of that really are even predominant over your your food. Well, mindset matters. What do you think? All the time, mindset matters. Mindset matters. It's like the old. It's like the old man and the kid who says. You got two wolves that that live inside of you, the, the good wolf and the bad wolf. And which wolf wins? Well, whichever wolf you, you feed, feed, right? Yeah. So we have choices to make in life. You know, people say, oh, happiness is a choice. Well, it kind of is. If, if you if you could see the, the silver lining and lean that way, I mean, everything's got balance. It, both things are always going to exist. But wherever you sit on the spectrum is going to be the experience that you have. Yeah, because you create... perception is infinite, mm-hmm. right? And whatever your perception is, is how you're going to experience things yeah you create your own environment Mm. and if if you're if you have an environment that is harmful of course you're not going to feel very good but if you have an environment that is helpful Mm. and lifts you up and makes you healthy you're going to feel really good yeah a great example (laughs) in the specific thing that we do you know with the food and how we change our food is like when someone says well you have to cut out gluten corn soy (laughs) dairy Right. All you think about, I can't have this. I can't have that. I can't have this. What do you eat? What? Right. And people (laughs) say, what do you eat? Well, I know what I eat and she knows what she eats because we actually sat down and wrote a list of everything that we could eat. So our focus became on the things that we could eat at 40 some, at almost 50 years old. I learned a whole new thing about (laughs) my palate, what foods I like, different spices to use. And let me tell you, I was already pretty good. I come from an (laughs) Italian household. We know how to eat. (laughs) <laughs> we're good at it we spent our lives in the kitchen with the yeah. family eating delicious things so yeah. you know if you focus on the on one part of something rather than another part of something that's the experience you'll have with that thing mm. oh, i mean i i totally agree with you um and it's interesting it's easier to understand how you could thrive mm. now right but what what i what i'm interested in also is prior to fixing all this Mm -hmm. how did how did or what impact do you think your your mentality had like is like were you always searching for something therefore you, you didn't think this was permanent like how did how did you um survive <laughs> that that more difficult Some people accept what's around them yeah. and don't and and listen if you find yourself in a hole you could either try to climb out of it or you could get buried in it right mm-hmm. and i see a lot of people when they think that they're in a hole that they just get buried in it and then they can't help themselves and then they they don't thrive and then they just think well this is the best it is and they're like okay i can yeah. do it like this even though it's not the, you know but then you see other people like, I know that there's a better way. I know there's something wrong. I, I feel yeah. it in my gut and I believe it. And I'm not going to ignore it. And I could sense it. And I am going to chase it and fight for this. And every once in a while, the universe gives me a sign. And there is a way out. There is a better way. And you hear that voice in your heart and soul. And you believe it. And you fight for it. And you find it. And it took me 20 years to, to figure out why I was internally bleeding. You know, that's a long wow. time to not have an answer, but it also, I, I wasn't going to use the traditional methods because anything else that I did traditionally didn't work, including a solution for that problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I've always been a person who just keeps going mm. regardless of anything. Like, I don't know, like to me, it's never, I, I don't know if I, I may have spent some time settling, but down, you know, in the place where you know who you really are, (laughs) you you feel like, hmm, this is not, I've got to do something to change this, Mm -hmm. whatever it is at that moment, you know, but all of those little steps that you take prior lead up to this, which feels like a big step, because it's so different than probably what you've been doing for little, your whole life. It's all those little steps you took that got yeah, you there. Yeah, and that uh, make yeah, you yeah. ready to yeah. be able to embrace that that final larger step. Mm, yeah, no, it, it, it's, uh, it's very interesting what you say. And it, it, it 
it sort of concurs with, which is probably why I like it, but no, you can be controversial, controversial, but it, it feels like you are always essentially who you are and your attitude to life allowed you and created the opportunities that came your way that then allowed you to fully heal. It sounds yeah, because like. if, if you weren't who you were, you wouldn't see those opportunities. Exactly, exactly. If you, they came in front of your face, you wouldn't see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the victimhood, right? <laughs> it's the... Yeah, and it can be overwhelming, you know? Yeah. It's overwhelming to remain in that type of situation, but it's also overwhelming to change your situation. You just have to figure out whether you want to do it or not. What, and, does it mean that much to you? And it has to be presented <laughs> to you in a way that you understand. Yeah. Right? Like, like yeah. Maybe yeah. you're ready for something, but it's not being presented to you in a way you understand. That's why you have to keep seeking because, like, I always say, I say this with the kids when we teach. It's like I tell all the teachers, all the studio owners, that sometimes they're like, well, these kids don't hear me. I'm like, well, you have to say something to, some, to, to a group of people a hundred times. And on the hundred and first time, maybe, just maybe, you'll yeah. say it in a way that one of them hears you differently and it opens up their whole mind and changes their whole entire life. So, mm -hmm. you know, persistency, being consistent, you know, there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of parameters that come into um, the conversation that we're having yeah. that apply to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what have you found to be the biggest challenge in, in, I mean, you're converting people by your own life experience, by your, the fun you're having in life, by the example of them. I think people ask you, ask you for your opinion, but then they're not ready for the truth and then they deny it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's a big one. Another yeah. big one is people think that all the food is going to taste terrible. And they're never going to get to go out to eat again. Right. Well, they're never going to enjoy life again because so many of their, much of their life is attached to the idea of food. Did you have one in particular you were going to say and then I jumped all over you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember know. now. I have you know. no idea what I was going to say. Yeah. But the biggest challenge is that we <laughs> find that to, to convert people. They're scared. It's unknown. You right. Know. Oh, that, that reminds me. Got it. There's not a whole lot of quote unquote, peer reviewed science, right? There's a whole lot of personal experience science right. out there yeah. and people keep attesting to their personal experiences and saying that all of these things worked for me. You're gonna have your own things that work for you, but at least I can put you down a path to discover those things for you. Oh. And you know, I think a lot of people don't believe something if it's not tangible. Or if it's not you know, until it happens sources. to them or if until it happens to a friend or a mm. family member. I just saw, you know, one of the big influences that caused us to write the book was we're on some groups on social media platforms and people kept asking the same questions over and over again and recently on on one of the soy boards mm -hmm. that I, i'm a member of someone said i just got a call from a family member who was recently diagnosed with a soy allergy and now she's had to cut it out and she called me to apologize for the trouble that she gave me when i had to deal with that allergy because now she's realizing what a pain in the butt it is to <laughs> have to you know remove soy in this particular case mm -hmm. and still live life and go out and you can but people who don't have to deal with it don't really understand what it takes mm -hmm. to do that that's that, <laughs> i think that's yeah. the biggest one of the biggest challenges yeah mm -hmm. yeah knowledge knowledge is power in this knowledge is power in this the more you know when when it's time for you to change your life like this the easier it is to do you know, but if you don't know it, like you said, unknowns could be scary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think in your life, I'm sorry, if someone in your life is telling you that they have an allergy, believe them, help them learn anything that you can about it, that, that because it, it just feels so hard it's, already. It's already hard enough for that person to make those changes. It's, it's not, it's not, I'm not oh. trying to compare these things, but 
when when people when people say, "Well, I'm gluten free," or so forth, they're like, "Oh, what do you eat air?" Or they make a joke. Every day it's like, a, but if someone came in and they said, "Hey, you look tired today," I'm like, "Well, I had to go to chemo." Oh, what do you got? Cancer? Like nobody would ever in their right minds make that joke. Right. And I'm not trying to compare the ailments at all in any way, shape, or form. But if someone is dealing with something, how dare you decide for them the severity of it without living a day in their life, a day in their life, or living in their shoes, yeah. or understanding what you need to fundamentally change in your life to successfully be healthy at that point? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you on that point. You know, it's it's what we don't know. We, you know, people tend to judge, mm -hmm. you know, or ridicule, or shame, or whatever. It's it seems to be um, our lovely conquer and divide um, yeah. <laughs> aspects, which is 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 insane, really, if you think of it. You know? I, I feel like we live in a divide, deceive, distract society a lot of times, mm -hmm. which doesn't make it easier for us to thrive. It makes it harder. No, no, for sure. Yeah. So ha have you found that, um, well, let, actually, I want to stick, I'm going to change my mind. Okay. <laughs> in your, um, in your, the diets and the recipes that I've saw on your, on your website, um, what do you find that the, the biggest challenge outside of the theoretical understanding, okay, you're going to do this, <laughs> you know, what do people need to, or what makes it easier? I understand making the list of what they can eat. I get that. I'm assuming read the labels so you can see how hidden all this stuff is. <laughs> that would be, you know, I mean, once you get that, you, you kind of got that. Right. Yeah. But after that, is it, the fear of the unknown that they haven't tried these foods that they were never exposed to other things or spices or is that some people want to try everything no matter what and I'm Manon Bolliger here and I want to thank you for taking actionable steps towards engaging your healing journey and helping others discover their path by watching sharing subscribing and reviewing these podcasts Every review and share helps spread the word, these different perspectives and choices and options for healing. And to thank you, I'd like to invite you to sign up to my free seven sequence email tips on health and healing for everyday life. You can go to healerscafe.com tips. Thanks so much. And other people are just like, nah, no thanks. I'm good. Uh, I'll stick to what I know. Um, you just have to have a little bit of adventure, <laughs> you know, just a tiny sense. You don't have to want to go off the deep end, you know, just, just a little bit, one thing at a time that's new. Don't try five things that are new at the same time. That's too much. You know, just try one thing at a time. Like if you're not used to having peppers in something and and now you're like, ooh, let me try that. Cool. Right. Try something with peppers. Just make that one dish or that one whatever. And, mm -hmm. and then and then you can start to add them to your list of good things. <laughs> Aware, awareness helps. Awareness helps a lot too. The more you're aware of, the easier it becomes. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And yeah. so your, your book, which I have not read, just letting you know <laughs> at this point yet, <laughs> thank you, Food as Prescription, <laughs> um, what, uh, what do you cover in, in your book? What can people learn from it? And yeah, we, There's a couple of testimonies and stuff like that, but it helps people understand that basically if you get diagnosed with something like this one morning, it's 72 pages long. It's a handbook to help you through your life from now on moving forward. And mm -hmm. after reading it, you should feel better and more secure about where the direction you're going. Like if a mm -hmm. doctor gives you a prescription for something, you can go to, to the, pharmacy. the pharmacy and fill it. If a doctor gives you a prescription for a gluten-free, soy-free, <laughs> corn-free diet, this is, the, this is how you fill it. You read this, right? <laughs> It, it'll you read the book it'll it'll tell you a little bit about our story it'll give you a couple of antidotes it'll like you said there's a food diary in there there's some um recipes in there mm -hmm. there's enough recipes that you can have like we, we show you how we make our flour you know chocolate chip cookies breakfast. everybody likes chocolate chip cookies there's, there's a breakfast, breakfast item there's a, a dressing salad, there's a yeah. salad you know like 
Um, there's, and the dinner. Right. And then there's also, like we said, uh, the tests that we took and how the tests uh, mm -hmm. respond and what tests, some tests are better than others and why. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a handbook to guide you through this process of changing your life fundamentally through your food. And we also talk about some of the benefits we've experienced mm -hmm. and other people have experienced. I mean, you know, after 20 years, you change your food, you stop internally bleeding, you want to shout that from the rooftops because every other pill on TV is telling you about ulcerative colitis and how this pill is going to help you, but you're still eating the poisonous food that's making you sick in the first place instead of just removing the food. So, you know, we connect a lot of the dots for people in the book. And, it's, it, you know, there's a forward by a doctor. Um, we teach people how to eat out yeah, or go um, on vacation or those kinds of things that can be one of the barriers, you know, that people yeah. want to put in place. We try to take some of your for, fears away. For when they're, tr when they think, oh my gosh, I have to change all of these things. Not only do I have to change the way I cook at home, but now I have to travel and I have to do that when I travel, you know, but you can travel and not be sick. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. That's, that's the real key here. We talk about mindset a little traveling bit. Traveling and not feeling sick. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, benefits um, that you have that you receive that you were not expecting because when you my started finger works. Start, oh. <laughs> my finger works again. My finger okay. wasn't working anymore. And she said to you, "It's that gluten. It's 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 inflammation. the inflammation in your in your in your Jeez. diet." Before before I did this, I was eating a more a diet that was that that. That was more inflammatory. Yeah, inflammatory. And now this diet is a lot less. Is more inflammatory. It's anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. Yeah. The other was inflammatory. Words are not my specialty now all the time. Now it's anti-inflammatory. So I, I had to take my time writing this because I didn't want to get the words wrong. Oh, uh, oh I think we just it. lost it's you. Okay. Can you hear us? No. It's, I, 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 yep. But on, you can turn it on. <laughs> it's yeah. Great. It, it. It. It's very sensitive. It, when it gets bumped, it's like yeah. we're out. We're good. <laughs> But, um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so those are the things that you, uh, yeah, you notice right away, or, or the benefits, not yeah. necessarily right away, but with time. Now, question. I lost, I lost 35 pounds. More energy. I have more yeah. energy. I'm Less sleeping joint better. joint pain. Like, yeah, it's just. I'm not internally bleeding anymore. Yeah. You know, okay. less joint pain. Yeah, it's, yeah. There's, there's quite a few benefits. And I don't have the side effects that regular medication has. I'm not right. going to have a coma because I'm eating better. I'm not going to suddenly have a blood clot because I've changed yeah. my food for the better. I'm not going to suddenly have anal leakage because I've changed to some freaking crazy oil. You know, yeah. what I mean? these are the real side effects of things that we take like yeah. craziness. I take for granted. Yeah, and people say, "Oh, yeah, just because it's common doesn't make it mean that it's normal, right?" Yeah, right. <laughs> we Why have such a low it? expectation, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. So I I'm specifically interested in Italian cooking. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me. Um, so what what happens now to the the pasta aspect of it? I still have pasta. I love my pasta. Yeah, I yeah, um, but I have pasta that's made of brown, brown rice. rice. Or I have pasta that's made he heavily of eggs. I have found a couple of um, places that make very, very nice either homemade pasta, mm -hmm. um, the Puma. That I love saying that name. The Puma up in New up in New England, like Massachusetts. I have to get it in in the mail. Or we use like Jovial. I love telling people brand names because that's one that's one of the trickiest. And they can look it up. <laughs> Holy moly! And we even we put a lot of brand names in the book. And because it it's expensive to make book. mistakes when you're living like this. You don't yeah. want to make expensive mistakes. It's the other reason why we why we wanted to do this so that people don't feel like they're making expensive mistakes, which becomes a deterrent to yeah. fulfilling the needs they need or the needs that they have. You know, mm -hmm. but yeah, I use uh, Jovial is another great one. Jovial makes great pasta. Yeah. And then you know I'm Italian, so I just cook it a little bit less because I like it al dente. I don't want mush. You know, and you take uh, his out, leave yeah. mine in, and yeah. <laughs> we practice it. It's great. It's great. Right. You know? <laughs> okay. Now what happens when you want to do like a cream sauce? What do you do then? We can have well, dairy. I can have dairy. Ah, okay. So I can do I that. Can. She can't. However, mm -hmm. depending on what we're doing, there are some alternative mm -hmm. milks that are excellent that don't have a lot of extra things in them. Additives. We love Elmhurst 1925. 
um, that's great. You can make your own, you know, uh, alternative milks at home, all that stuff yeah. you want. But we like that at Elmhurst 1925. And you just put a little bit in. There's also some nice cream cheeses now. Mm -hmm. or you know, right. it, The products have gotten, the products have gotten better gotten way and more better. prevalent uh -huh. since I first started this over yes. 10 years ago. The, I, it's, it's, a, it's like a $27 billion industry now. So yeah. if yeah. you make food products, they're making them for us because they realize there's a lot people of people that need there, that need, need this, awesome. and if they're gonna and and if the people that own the places that make the things know they're gonna make money, well, then they're gonna do the thing that makes they're it. They're gonna money. do it, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And and uh, removing soya, have you noticed specifically an impact on on either of you? Well, I when I accidentally have it, um, it takes me about five minutes, and I wind up in the bathroom. Um, okay. So that's what it does to it runs me right through. in addition to several days you know joint of pain. joint pain effects mm -hmm. and brain fogginess that kind of stuff it affects him on his um skin my skin right away I, starts, I, start get, I get a little red and itchy and and he has these like they're not I'm skin ulcers but like his skin yeah. of, it, it affects his skin it's like a zit kind of type of thing. that's hot well, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Um, and and we think that that is what happens to him also on the inside when he accidentally right. deployed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that sounds like fun. Too. Yeah. Now you have mentioned, you know, removing the, what looks like mostly the top allergens um, and reducing inflammation. Have you um, noticed impact one way or another with um, with w whether you're eating meat or no meat or does that impact we eat specific? We eat specific meat. If you go to our website, you can see it on the affiliates page. We do pasture raised, um, you know, we, poultry and things like yes. that. Grass fed beef. Yeah, so we use crowd cow. hormone stuff. Yeah, we, we use crowd cow. We like crowd cow a lot. They, you know, they have higher quality meats. Yeah, yeah. So and there we, are some other regional services that are like Crowd Cow as well. If that's not available in your area, mm -hmm. just yeah. do a quick internet search for local um, farms, local farms, grass-fed yeah. yeah. meat grass uh, delivery, yeah. something like that. You yeah. know, yeah. and they'll pop. That's up. That's one of the other reasons why we're moving and why we want to move to a place that is a little bit more. Um, farmer oriented so that we well, get a quality oh my God, i was ourselves. just at the store today and i'm like oh man new york sucks yeah it's just you know it's expensive we just to got bring good back things here. from traveling yeah. we drove all the way out to oregon and all the way back this summer and it's amazing the quality of food that once you leave new york densely populated areas. it's so much better <laughs> yeah well, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting times, you know, because of also what's happening. You know, I don't know, you were mentioning going up north to Finland and all those areas. Yeah. But in uh, in Holland, the farmers are are fighting hard to be able to keep their their lands. Right. And yeah. in Canada, oh, cool my God, in America, there's some there's some weird food, fire related land things, subsidies. Yes going yeah. on that I can't really get a handle on yet but I keep seeing different mentions yeah. I'm trying to keep keep my eyes and ears on to understand yeah that. no and in, in Canada um, we're about to open the biggest cricket um cricket farm I suppose to replace meat in the in the idea of um, better ecology which is sort of the the new movement here anyway and it's um it's terrible because you know, I, I do eat meat, but I eat, you know, sp specialized meat, as in meat that hasn't been tampered with, you know, right. grown where I know where it is, where there's local farmers and, yeah. you know, nice. and yeah, and, and the thing is that we were made natural, so it makes naturally sense that putting natural things in us is probably going to be better than processed anything or injected anything or you whatever, think. whatever, you know, you would you think. Would think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when those animals are not injected with things, their natural body systems produce natural right. things for the environment. 
And exactly. methane isn't as big of a problem because the cow, the cow who is fed all the hormones has a different type of methane than the cow who's not fed all of those types of hormones. Yeah, that I, yeah, I hadn't heard that idea, but I, I'm thinking, you know, cow farts compared to private jet planes. I don't know. You know? Yeah, right? This is the common sense piece. <laughs> Anyway, but we are detracting from the very serious <laughs> discussion we we're having. <laughs> so. so I was on this jet that had fun yeah. cows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, look, I mean, our time is almost up. Um, you shared your book. <laughs> uh, any, um, any last comments you would like to, to share? I always like to remind people, please be an advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you're not getting the medical advice from one professional that you, that that you feel it's that feels genuine for you, yeah. or true for you, or really, then there's a reason for a second opinion. When you get a second opinion, go to a different approaching doctor so you can get opposing views and then figure out what's yes. best for yourself. Like functional medicine is a great place to start if you're not if you're not feeling like you're getting the attention or the understanding and respect from the doctor that you're currently with. That you need from them um aside from that please come find us on social media and like ask us questions and we love to help um come on our website food is a prescription.com or loca foods inc and you know or grab find the book. us on facebook instagram twitter yeah grab the book and and if you're the kind of person that likes to get things you know from the mom and pop shop down the block we have an isbn number you could grab our isbn number of amazon and then go to the shop locally give them the number Ask and they'll get the book order, yeah. in, into the store for you you know what i mean like this is this this is no joke you, you all save your own lives by you know learning things like this about yourself so don't stop don't quit be an advocate for yourself and you can do this and there are other people out there who have done it too and they want to help you so know that great <laughs> perfectly said thank, thank you so much yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks having for having us, having us. yeah and thank you for doing this for people so that they can hear from other people from all over and get different ideas and understandings of the world if it wasn't for people like you doing this then your audience wouldn't have someone to listen to so good on you well done thanks Thank you for joining us at the Healers Cafe with Manoa Belize. Continue your healing journey by visiting thehealerscafe.com and her website and discover how to listen to your body and reboot for optimal health.